Minister Mutambi, thank you so much for making time for ANN7 this morning after a lengthy discussion already this morning. I wanted to find out first and foremost, how was your Africa Day yesterday? Yes, it was good. It was great. There was events in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And you had our president had a moving speech there to say we're one nation, one Africa. I think we're making inroads in making sure that we build social cohesion, mm -hmm. nation building as a country. And I'm excited by the fact that as a country we're leading from the front. Mm -hmm. That's the most exciting part of it, given the past experiences with the xenophobic attacks. I think that messaging now is loud and clear. We are one continent, we are Africa, we are Africans, we must treat each other with respect and dignity. And that is what Africa Day and Africa Month is all about, definitely. Yes. So talking to discussions around communication and what we, we've been discussing here this morning, there's been a lot of uh, debate around uh, so-called leaked reports to newspapers and to the media. Uh, the police minister also came out and questioned the intentions behind those leaked reports. What are your views and comments? Yeah, on that one, because I think it's time when we talk about immediate transformation. I think it's time now as a country we need to discuss this, because to me, once you talk of a leaked report, there should be a source. And then at the end of the day, with the policies that we're trying to put in place, we need to make provision to that, because this issue of people hiding behind the, the, the identities of people leaking. And then also there should be consequences and repercussions. I think it's time for us journalists, you must belong to a professional body. You know lawyers belong to a particular professional body. You know your auditors. And if we can't professionalize this career, that's why we'll always have issues like this, at the times what annoys me a great deal is trembling on the rights of other people. And then you know rumor mongering and gossip, the damage that it can have because at the end of the day, if somebody has to make an apology just in a smaller, finer papers, and you don't even see that apology, doesn't, but at that time the reputation of the person, the damage is much, it's extensive, yes. And so. with regards to the role of media, uh, in your budget speech you spoke of uh, uh, how the media would rather focus on scandalizing the government, even if it means they don't have all their ducks in a row, they don't have all their facts together. Uh, what exactly did you mean by that statement and could you elaborate? I think basically there's a posture that I see the private media is taken towards government. As long as government, we have seen media as a partner because we're expecting South African media to, to play their part. But that's not the case here. Most of the time, the reporting that you get is not balanced. Safe to say, it will be told, said uh, attempts to get the spokesperson of the department were in vain. But it's not balanced. Inside that, then it leads to, 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 to a situation where in our people are being misinformed misfed with information, wrong information, that doesn't assist them in any way because now we should be talking about de developmental communication wherein people are empowered in a balanced and fair manner. But mostly, there, that's why I'm saying there's a particular posture that has been taken by the private media to that effect to say whatever they do will be scandalizing the government as if government it's just full of corruption. There's nothing good that the government is doing. We have seen now the emergence of the AN7 and New Age. And now you see there are calls for you to be shut down because you have taken that space of not confusing the, the nation. At least I need to commend you to say you are reporting. Your reporting is balanced. And then you are giving South Africans a choice mm -hmm. to choose what kind of information. Unlike this one that you normally get from this mainstream media. That's why now you are as new entrants. You won't be allowed to occupy the space because now you are disrupting the agenda. So that's why now you see there's a lot of attacks on AN7, a lot of attack on N New Age, because at least that balanced reporting, the good thing about it, I've observed, watched your news, also read the newspaper several times, it's balanced. Mm -hmm. What we need is just balanced story, not one-sided type of story. And also, there's no element of patriotism. 
Yes, the media has taken a pouch to be a watchdog, but being a watchdog, it comes also with the responsibility that then you need to be responsible in whatever you do. That's the thing that you don't see at the end of the day. And that has got serious implication in our country. Our country is perceived abroad. I've traveled, the moment I'm traveling outside the country, you see the news that because at the end of the day, this uh, mainstream media, they're the ones that are feeding to Reuters. And our country then is perceived as a corrupt country, a country that has been known during the xenophobic attack last year as xenophobic. You see, all the time you still see stories of poverty, hunger, no positive stories that deals with nation building, that deals with social cohesion in the country. Mm -hmm. That's one another thing that, I, and I've never seen happening it in any other states except in South Africa. Now you've mentioned uh, ANN7 and the new age and, and the, the, the talk that's been going around those two, two companies. As the government, has there been discussions and could you maybe elaborate on some of the discussions around ANN7 and the new age? No, as ourselves particularly because we are responsible for the communication industry. It's a cause of concern. Though I cannot say the engagements that are taking place that at the later stage uh, will have to then explain that to the public. But in particular in our case, I heard Mr. Moksun Williams saying earlier this, this, uh, this morning to say, you'll have to close shop. Mm -hmm. It's a blow to the media industry at its own in the sense that in terms of when we are talking about media transformation, media diversity, that will then take our country back in the sense that the strides within this short space of time. Hence, you see, South Africans are, tr are consuming your newspapers now. They are watching your TV because it gives them options, unlike the one that is just focused. Because at least when you report, your reporting is balanced, is fair. That's one thing that one who could see. And then you, you make effort to make sure that you, you contact whoever is affected on the subject matter so that you have a balanced story. So that's, there's an element of patriotism that I aspire a lot with the newspaper reporting, the TV reporting. And then definitely now you are, you've heard the stories of markets collapsing and the tool that they're using is the, is the media this print media, the private media, such that then it has got a serious reputation implication also in our country. Because being South African, the buzzword first should be patriotic. You must love the brand South Africa. It means then you have got a responsibility to promote. I'm not saying condone wrong things. Yeah, the wrong things must be said that these things are wrong, but also at the end of the day, when things are being done, there are remedies that are always provided to make sure what are we doing to deal with that. I'll tell you now, since President Zuma came to power, there's been a lot of efforts to deal with corruption in the country. You remember the number of commissions that he has appointed to deal with these issues? How the hawks has unrooted a lot in the prosecutions, right? But you don't hear those kind of thing on the efforts. Remember in 2014, one of our priority was to deal with corruption and crime. There's been a lot of effort, but there's not much that is get reported. The only thing is the negativity that's being reported all the time. But on the other hand, there's been a lot of effort. As government, we have uh, adopted a nine point plan. And then the PICC is hard to work. There are mega projects that this government has, has, has approved and that are being implemented. But you'll just see a snapshot. Can I give you a typical example of the land restitution program that the president was handing over over the weekend in Bumalang? There was literally, you didn't see something very aggressive dealing with how as government will progress in implementing our land restriction program. That limited thing wherein you find communities from different areas. There were people from Limpopo, people from Pumalanga meeting together because they know the issue of a restriction land. There's, there's money that they get in the first place. Also long term, the beneficiation, the mere fact that they got their land back, they'll be able to plow and sustain themselves. That's the narrative you expect people to say, at least government on this point, he had made inroads in making sure that now we're on track on government to implement our land restitution program. Mm -hmm. Not much is said. I'll give you a typical example. Day before yesterday, the president visited Toyota, wherein you can see the industrialization taking place here. 
where in now we are in Africa months part of the theme of Africa month is to advance young people and women initiatives mm -hmm. Toyota has employed a lot of women a lot of women are doing the work that used to be a male dominated industry but you don't hear that story that good thing to say the positive part of it is it just a snip end mm -hmm. that you see then it ends there but the positive but also on our part that's why as government hence we talk about media transformation to see throughout we have thought that media is a partner we have tend to realize that it's not such there's a particular posture towards government what what sells what is good news is when government is being scandalized mm -hmm. That's when now you see AN7, New Age, they are under attack based on the sense that you are balancing of reporting. Mm -hmm. Hence, we're talking about media transformation. We have then uh, delivered a lot of community media in the sense of community radio stations that are licensed, community print medias. When, when it comes to print media, print media South Africa was supposed to contribute towards the development of a community print media. Mm -hmm. They've stopped since 2014, they are saying they want to see what is the government transformation agenda. But you see, at the back of the mind, it's not about the government transformation agenda. They've realized that print media is coming now mm -hmm. at great high size, that they become their competitor. So in essence, it's very clear and evident to say, how do you find somebody who's tending to be your, 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 your competitor at the end? Hence, they are withdrawal. But if these are South African companies that we've been supporting as government, you also check majority of our adverts, the ad spent. As government, we have been responsible for the sustainability of this newspaper. Mm -hmm. But what is funny enough, you'll see, you've put all your government tenders in front, you put all your adverts, the bulk of the majority of this mainstream media, the front page will be scandalizing government. How do you be, by the hand that feeds you? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they should, they should, we understand media freedom in South Africa. And is this government that's led by the African National Congress that has championed this to say South Africa media is free today. But I've got a problem when that freedom gets to be abused in the sense that now it trembles over even on the rights of other individuals. And on that topic, uh, Minister Media Freedom, and, and on a topic of, of finding solutions and implementing change, with regards to the regulation of media, what, what, what are the conversations around that and what are the plans with regards to that, the possibility of that? That's the issue we need to seriously deal with ownership. You remember those, the audit bureau standards, those results that they, in terms of the circulation, I've got a problem with that because it doesn't deal with the actual sets. I think we need to review that body as well. And then also the issue of professionalizing the industry. I think it's time we need to professionalize the industry. I think those are the key. And we must deal with matters of ownership. Mm -hmm. You remember, we've got good journalists that have been working in the industry. There's no progression for them. It ends them dying journalists. And you see also in the management structure of these big media companies, there are very fewer black people. I mean, fewer historically disadvantaged individuals, fewer women in the industry. It's just male dominated. And then those uh, previously advantaged, they are the ones that still benefit out of that. So we'll be holding a colloquium towards the end of June, beginning of July, so that we start, start to make the way forward. But I think, this is our flagship project for the department. Last year, we did digital migration. Now, I think media transformation is the name. Mm. And Minister, let's expand on uh, the SABC's decision to implement the 90% uh, local music on radio. We now heard of plans uh, with regards to the actual TV station now also slowly phasing out international content. Talk us through why that decision has been made, why it's important, and what the future plans are. That decision had to be made because through our robust policies as government, number one, we are in South Africa here. And this is about South Africans. That's why the issue of local content has been our high priority in the agenda to say that has to be done. It's also part of the transformation. You have had a situation wherein our South African singers died paupers, such that when somebody dies, an artist, he has renowned the international way, recognizing him. But at the end of the day, because 
I think it's time we also need to reward creative industry in the sense that it can be all the time our artists, when they are supposed to perform for us, they must just perform for free. It's exploitation. Mm -hmm. well, so they have got livelihoods. Exactly, millions of, millions of rents. Mm -hmm. They have got livelihoods to sustain. You know, you have got instances wherein we owe it also to our fallen heroes and it comes to the artistic industry, creative industry such that you find a person has got art, very creative, but at the end of the day, that talent has never benefited him economically. Mm -hmm. That's the trying to say, part of then encouraging our artists, also we need to have to instill pride, South African pride. Mm -hmm. You see, South Africa is rich in terms of cultural diversity. And that's another opportunity we never explored in the past, such that we believe Western thing with the most appropriate issue, undermining our own cultures. That's the other thing. Remember also the SABC is responsible for nation building. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? You build the nation also through creative arts, because that's the way you recognize talent. And where talent is due like what other countries do, you need to pay what is due to this artist. That's, that's the rationale behind that, you see. And then we need to lead from the front because also all these license conditions that the SABC has been given is that there should be local content. Remember, CASA prescribed a particular percentage, but I'm very much excited because the SABC has exceeded that percentage. It's another radical, uh, revolutionary, uh, I mean, a, a transformation process that we've seen happening in through the lifespan of the SABC, wherein all cultures, all languages are treated equally. Remember, when we took government, we inherited those uh, three TV stations that SABC, TV 1, 2, 3, that we changed to 1, 2, and 3. Still there, it didn't represent the cultural diversity there. Certain, remember we've got 11 official languages, but you find that certain languages were not represented in those channels. Hence now the issue of content when it comes to also production, TV production. I'm very much excited that the SABC has been moving throughout the province now, uh, consulting with the commissioning editors, because we want all South African stories to be told on television. Definitely, which is very important. And another topic is that the fact that the arts and, and this, these individuals' music is, is their bread and butter. So exciting to hear that the SABC has now decided to increase uh, the royalty percentage as well. Talk us through that decision. That has been our call, remember, when they launched the Encore channel mm -hmm. on DSTV. There were a lot of criticism, but that was the rationale behind to say, and you could have seen the excitement then when that program was launched mm -hmm. on DSTV. But the rationale was just to prepare the SAB so that when digital migration come, that channel then will be one. Already now they've got the news channel, also the Encore channel wherein they are playing all this music. And then you could have seen the excitement, the feedback that we get. Of now you can see the hype all over. Everybody is saying this decision is revolutionary. It's for the first time in the history of our country, wherein our artists got recognized, wherein our artists then I paid their dues, what is joy and payable to them. And I think it's a great achievement inside to say that even these artists now, they will, they will be, some of them were being recognized abroad. But as South Africans here, we could even recognize them and pay what is due to them. To me, that is an excellent achievement on the part of the ACBC. But these are the policies that we have put in as the Ministry of Communication together with the Minister of Arts and Culture. Remember, artists, they fall within the ambit of the Minister of Arts and Culture. But as department, because we are responsible for the implementation of Outcome 14 in terms of the NDP, we are working jointly together with the Minister of Arts and Culture to make sure that this this objective is realized. Minister, let's uh, switch gears uh, a bit and, and chat a little bit about uh, the SABC and uh, Claudia Motsoneng. With regards to the Western Cape High Court's decision now uh, to dismiss the application for leave to appeal, what is your response? Yeah, on that one, I must indicate that it's the SABC matter. Remember, I give concurrences to uh, the minister, mm -hmm. but mainly the appointing, the, the appointing authority is the board. I think the board is seized with the matter. Mm -hmm. Let's give them the space to deal with the matter. When the time is right, then they will be able to advise me what is the way forward to that effect. Mm -hmm. So, but also I must say up front to say the SABC has 
managed to comply with the public protectors report. The matters that are also subject to care now, because you might have heard the DA has also taken the, 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 the matter of the DC to, for review in the courts, and the matter is set down for hearing in June 2016. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, thus far, looking at what is happening at the SABC, I think what the SABC has done in appointing Mr. Musoning, somebody who has moved within the ranks of the broadcaster and the impact that you can see now is making. I mean, everyone can see the impact this chap is doing when it comes to the efficiency. From the time when he took over, the SABC was in the red, you recall. Then they had to pay that government loan guarantee. Now the SABC is liquid through his, his active involvement as the chief operation officer. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I shouldn't deal much with what the courts are up to. I think at the end of the day, the matter will be brought to finality. Safe to say, as an individual, I think he's got rights enshrined in the Constitution. Let's allow that legal process to take place. At the end of the day, there will be finality. Mm. Are you able to uh, expand at this current time on his, his current position and what happens with regards to that now? I'm told that the SAPC has petitioned the Supreme Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. That means then he's still the CEO until the courts decide otherwise. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you very much, uh, Minister, for your time this morning and for chatting to us here at ANN7. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much.